so today uh, you know last year during the uh, isaka chennai conference if you all remember uh, we had three workshops and one of the workshop was on gamification and sendil uh, did uh, uh, facilitate that we thought uh, you know in this difficult times of uh, covid and when we are all uh, operating from home awareness is key uh, and how do we gamify you know it's uh, just a thought process uh, of um, you know how can we uh, gamify uh, a mundane um, you know process based uh, things so uh, sandeep is just going to give a overview about that so to give, to uh, have a brief description about the talk it's, uh, it's you know how do you engage with your customers through behavioral science and game uh, game gameful uh, design or simply gamification so employee says gamification makes them feel productive happier at work uh, why don't we make boring tasks at your workflow engaging and fun it may sound unrealistic but gamification will indeed do so so the next uh, hour and a half sandil uh, uh, will walk us through a simple you know process then we can uh, you know expand it to how we want to gamify our awareness program so we'll give a background about sandil sandil is founder and ceo of madi games private limited sandil is a passionate teacher at heart and design serious games with the vision of unleashing human potential through serious play serious play it's a interesting uh, uh, thing over the past 8 years sendil has walked in in many shoes from nano fluids researcher to a computational fluid dynamics analyst to liberal arts evangelist to ultimately an edupreneur since 2017 his serious game was presented in tech 2018 organized by unesco mgiep and he won the youth speak summit award in 2018 for his game Maddy Games also won the TN Innovation Grand Challenge 2019 and has been human skills trainer partner for various organizations across India. He is a mechanical engineer uh, engineering graduate from uh, College of Engineering Gindi and a recipient of prestigious Young India Fellowship. He has worked on international research projects in India, UK holds in master in thermal energy storage. He is certified by Harvard Business School in HBX score and holds dual certification in gamification and behavioral science. Uh, welcome back sandil and uh, over to you hello hello everyone um can you all hear me yes sandil loud and clear sandil you can unmute sandil you can unmute yourself and speak now yeah yeah thank you so i'll start sharing my screen and then i will just continue with the flow So I'll be keeping my chat window on so that if anybody want to communicate with me uh, during the flow, I can always chat uh, during the uh, during the session so that I can reply whenever it's required. Uh, uh, so very good evening. So uh, the IoT program last week I think has brought in more people today, like uh, uh, close to 200 people, and uh, IoT I think I owe him I think. So I owe him a lot for uh, picking so many people for the session on a Saturday evening, and I hope I do justice for uh, your time on a Saturday evening. Uh, so today's topic is uh, gamification, why and how. And uh, thank you for uh, YD for the great introduction. Uh, I'll just move on to my actual uh, thing. Yeah. So uh, as part of this webinar, there's a small challenge that I have for you. Uh, so in the slide, uh, in every page of the slide or uh, wherever, look for words that are underlined. There are some letters in the presentation that are underlined, and uh, keep a note of all the letters that are underlined. And those underlined letters will combine together to form four words. And those four words are also, and the four words are also there in the PPT. Uh, so you can always find the four words uh, somewhere in the PPT. And another clue is that those four words are together. Uh, I hope everyone is clear. Uh, you can always give a thumbs up uh, as a reaction uh, uh, when you are clear. Uh, so there will be some letters that will underline. Make sure you make a note of all the letters that are underlined. 
those underlined words combined together to form four words and those four words are there in the ppt and those four words are together so that's the cue for all of you guys and uh, i'll just continue with the presentation and yeah the winners will get a special reward and uh, that's one thing yeah so once you get to find the four words towards the end of the session uh, you have a reward Uh, so before I go into the presentation, I want to take the poll. Uh, Vaidhi, can you help me take the poll? Uh, I'll send the poll uh, for Sripati and if you can run the poll, it will be great. Yeah, yeah, poll is launched. Yeah, thank you. So this is the question guys. Gamification is for what? It's for motivation, engagement, entertainment, learning. Uh, what do you guys think? Motivation, engagement, entertainment, learning. Okay, the poll is closed. Uh, so uh, I hope everybody can see the poll results also. Uh, uh, so there is around 47 percentage of people answering that gamification is for engagement. And uh, uh, Sandil, do you want to relaunch because I have a number of uh, responses around 110. I will just relaunch it for 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah, great. That will be fine. So they have to work from beginning again. Yeah. So again, it's coming. Okay. So it's, it's similar numbers. I'm getting 50 percentage of people uh, answering close to uh, engagement and very less percentage on uh, entertainment and motivation and more people on learning. Uh, well and good. Uh, we'll find the answer towards the end of the session. I hope that's one of the key takeaways for me, for you. And that's my objective for today. Uh, so whenever someone says the so whenever someone says gamification we always come across uh, these typical terms right games serious games uh, gamification uh, do you guys have any idea about what games are what see is there any other words uh, that come across you when someone says gamification you can just put it in the chat window any other words that you come across when someone says gamification. Looking at the chat window, you can put up your chat. Password. Yeah. yeah. So, what? Where else do you associate uh, gamification with? Uh, there is someone call it gamified learning, people call it gamified learning, uh, people call it serious game. This is one of the buzzword and it's also one of the most, uh, uh, I can say, uh, it's not used properly. Uh, it's been used in different ways, but people do not understand uh, uh, what it pretendly means to me. So today I will just give you a glimpse of what actually gamification is and how it is different from it's gambling. Okay? okay. How it is different from games, uh, serious game and stuff. So fun and learn. Uh, okay. So thanks. Thanks for your uh, feedback now and then. Just keep it going. So that's the only way I can communicate with all of you guys because I don't see any of you. So the chat is what I see that people are awake and people are listening. Yeah. So, so if you can, if I can split out the four uh, uh, series games, games into like four different quadrants. So we have X and Y axis, uh, X axis on gameplay and no gameplay. Uh, gameplay is something that there is some game mechanisms. There is something that is interesting. That's on your right side and game, no gameplays uh, without any gameplay. And that is something called fun and entertainment and that is something called purpose. And if you can see it, gamification, it is without any gameplay and with some purpose. So gamification is not a game. It looks like a game, but doesn't have any gameplay out there, but it has a purpose. And the purpose of gamification can be a lot of things, but the main, sorry, but the main objective of gamification is not entertainment, it's not learning, it's not engagement, it's actually motivation. So 
people do gamification to motivate people to do certain tasks to encourage them to do certain activities so the motivation if you want to remember one thing towards the end of the day towards the end of the webinar it's only one thing gamification equals motivation and then someone says gamified learning uh it's predominantly they speak about gamification and serious games are completely different that's what uh, we are into so muddy is into uh, uh serious games so these have gameplay and they have a purpose uh so th- these are actual games so serious games are actual games that you play but you play with a purpose in mind you learn something out of it that's the purpose of serious game and that's what uh, muddy is into uh, i don't enter into sales game right now so today's topic is predominantly on gamification uh so if i to make it clear gamification simply means motivation and nothing else uh so now uh, what is gamification and why gamification and case studies and gamification so for doing this i will just move on to uh, another uh, mod i'll just move on to uh, a mind map and then come back to this later uh, for how how gamification will come back to the ppt and right now we'll step into something called mind maps uh are you all able to see my uh, uh mind map here just type yes great 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 thank you uh so the webinar challenge is okay you all know what webinar challenge is habit formation will come to it later so under gamification uh, so what is gamification so as i told you uh, uh what gamification is but how do people gamify like uh what uh, what is as per definition what is as per wikipedia and stuff like that so it says that bringing bringing game elements into a non game context uh, any process any process that is that is not a game so if you bring in game elements into it it becomes a gamification is what gamification is as per definition i will also tell what is gamification as per uh, the number one gamification guru in the world uh, he is called uh, yukai chao so yukai chai is the world's number one gamification guru so he calls gamification as the craft of deriving all the fun and addictive elements addicting elements found in games and applying them to real world or productive activities so that's what he call it gamification and the more or less both the definitions means the same and i personally feel that gamification can also be said that it's a kind of game it's not a game it's a kind of game which you can play endlessly and nobody complains about it so if you are playing games ever since the morning till evening people will complain about it but this sort of uh, gamification nobody will complain about it but that's uh, another way of looking at uh, gamification so as per wikipedia it says bringing game elements into a non game context so what do you mean by game elements uh because just by bringing in game elements into a non game context doesn't make it gamification because nobody likes all the games right what are some of the games that you like uh, to play we like cricket or some any any form of video games right uh, name some video games that you guys like uh, playing if at all any Uh, any mobile games any video games that you are playing 3 or 4 okay any other games that you like to play that you keep like to play strategy based games command and con candy crush mario okay so these are the ga- there are a lot of forms of uh, games that are mario but nobody likes those games right so uh, just because something is a game doesn't make it interesting so the purpose of gamification is to make it interesting to someone to do an activity so just because you bring in some game elements uh need not make it motivating for people to do it so when i say game elements uh, which i repeatedly saying it there are a lot of things uh the common game elements that you find in almost all the games are uh, leaderboards uh, uh so you see leaderboards right uh, rank number 1 rank number 2 score number 1 he's the winner he's the loser first number first first second third these are nothing but leaderboards so you find leaderboards as one of the game elements batches uh you can say batches is also a leaderboard like uh, now you become a uh, you are cross level 1 you are cross level 2 those are something like batches those are part of games right so you take this game elements like batches and use it in non game context power booster for example if you are playing mario for some quite some time the mario actually changes shapes right you become a super mario so that's like a power booster after you complete certain action you get a power boosting 
so that is also a game element and points uh you hit a brick you get some points so those are like points typically those are game elements and progress bar your energy is left yeah energy is left lives left you have still four lives left you have still two lives left so these are some of the game elements that you find in almost in all the games so how can you bring those game elements into a non game context is is called gamification but just by bringing that game element into a non game process does not make it gamification so i'll make it clear uh, as we go further and uh, so that is like what is gamification as per the definition and uh, the rule books and stuff like that now we'll go into why gamification so as i said it's like one thing is to motivate others to do some mundane task so if some tasks are repeatedly mundane so give me some examples of a mundane task that you want to do every day that you're trying to that you want someone to do but nobody is doing give me an example of some mundane tasks uh you can just type it in the chat window uh, any mundane task that you know uh if you're a leader you want your team to do but they're not doing it or your manager is asking you to do but they're not doing it exercise in today's situation data entry great data entry wearing mask okay great filling time sheets exactly exactly thank you guys thank you so this is what i want to say to motivate others to do certain mundane tasks like attending morning meetings every day 9 to 9:30 meetings nobody likes it how to make someone attend the meeting update every day progress via email at the end of the day or fill a time sheet what did you do log in those activities are mundane activities people do not like to do it but how do we motivate them to do it work 5 days a week that's also mundane these days nobody likes to work all 5 days a week that's also getting difficult so how do you make sure people work all 5 days a week so those are some challenges out there so how do we do it let's let's see, let's see. Uh, so that's one of the objectives that we want to do the others would be like uh, people are saying i want to do exercise brushing and bathing yeah, brushing and bathing are also difficult maybe during covid yeah to motivate yourself to do create a system or a habit right so that's also challenging uh so you want to you want to exercise every day you want to have healthy food you want to avoid uh, snacks right? to motivate or demotivate so both the thing works so to motivate yourself to create a habit or break a habit so those are something that you want to gamify it uh, let's see how we'll do it uh so activities like waking up at 5 am exercising every day cooking for yourself cooking for your wife read one book per month do it one book per week how many of you have the goal set right we all have a goal set but we don't do it so how do we make it happen so that's what we're going to see today brush twice a day we all brush once a day because we have some cue for that because we have bad breath so we brush but how do you brush when you're going to sleep oil take oil bath twice a week a lot of lot of other things can be done avoid social media but how can we motivate ourselves to do certain things can we gamify those things we can and let's look at that and the other thing is to trigger or persuade someone to do a specific activity getting a routine is different making someone are doing a routine a mundane task is different but doing a certain task like once in a lifetime like one time uh for example something like uh try out a product or try out a product like you do not want someone to buy the product but at least try my product maybe you like it or buy a product you want me to buy the product that can be one thing which you want to trigger someone you want to persuade someone but you're not making it happen or keep using a product for example facebook they want to use their product saas products almost all the saas products you want them to use it because only then they pay subscription money for you and you get paid uh, and you get your uh, profit or refer someone about a product so you want them to market about your product so how do we trigger someone to do all these activities so i think Uh, if i am broadly clear these are some of the activities that we like to do uh, through gamification we want to motivate all these things but can we do it all via motivation absolutely yes and we want to see it and we all know it that's the beautiful part we all know it because we all brush uh, we all brush once a day we all uh, uh, i mean we all take bath once a day at least so we we do some things without even motivation uh, because we all know certain things i'm just going to tell you what you know today in a better way in a putting in a different frame of that's it I'm not going to teach you uh, a scientific discovery it's just that all these things we know every day we know it perfectly I'm just making it making it very clear that's it uh yeah so we done with these things why can it be
Now, before I get into how do we gamify those things, let's also look at some case studies. Like why we do certain things for, uh, like why we do certain things for free. We are doing certain activities for free. It's a very difficult task to do, but we still do it for free. It takes time, it takes effort, but we do it for free. For someone else, not for yourself, for someone else. We are addicted to certain tasks. Uh, so why are those things happening? So I'll want to give you some, uh, instead of asking you for some uh, 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 common, uh, some common answer, I'll give you, give you some, some triggers. So try to answer those questions uh, uh, if possible. So I'm just gonna like ask like eight different questions. Uh, so eight different, uh, so these eight different questions falls under eight different frameworks which we're going to discuss today. So there are only eight different frameworks we're going to see. And uh, these eight questions will act as the baseline for those eight frameworks. So once we understand these eight questions, you will uh, it'll be easier for you to understand uh, uh, the framework. So why people write for Wikipedia? So we all uh, we all refer Wikipedia, right? Uh, is there anyone among the group who writes in Wikipedia? Anybody? Anybody who writes uh, like who edits in Wikipedia? I do it. Uh, is there anyone who writes? Uh, Said yes. M. Sendhil Kumar, MSK writes uh, in Wikipedia, great. So Wikipedia is completely written by volunteers. Uh, that is nothing like an organization called Wikipedia who hires like content writers and do research and write something. It's people, it's just people like us who writes for Wikipedia. The only thing we don't, uh, I mean, in our group, we don't find many people, but most people out there write for Wikipedia. Why people write for Wikipedia? Can you take a guess? Uh, I just, I just write it down here. So why people write for Wikipedia? Just give out your thoughts under the chat window. I will write it down here. So why do you think people write for Wikipedia? The presence and purpose. Great. Some purpose is there. Okay. Share knowledge. Great. It's a mutual give and take. Uh, it's a mutual give and take. You give, uh, so you become a giver and you take something. Great. Give and take. Because it's free for everyone. Because it's free for everyone. Because it's free. Share knowledge. To share some purpose. A mark of recognition based on post A mark of recognition. Great. A mark of recognition. That's something interesting. Satisfaction, pooling of knowledge. Great guys, thank you. Thank you for your answers. So that's one question of your answer. So people write to Wikipedia to feel a better purpose. Uh, like video upload in YouTube. Exactly. So why do people upload in YouTube? So YouTube has a... Uh, at least uh, when you say... Uh, uh, who said that? MSK said that uh, people upload videos in YouTube. Uh, there are two angles to it. Sometimes YouTube has a monetary benefit to it. So more people likes it, more subscribers. They get paid also. But Wikipedia, nobody pays. It's completely... It's, Completely volunteer activity. Uh, so that's what I took uh, Wikipedia, but that's a good thought, uh, MSK. Uh, Self satisfaction, esteem, great. Uh, your answers are exactly right. Uh, and uh, So I'll just move to the question number two for now. Uh, so I think everybody, uh, uh, I mean, everybody in Isaka will have a LinkedIn profile, I suppose. Uh, if not, you should have. I hope everybody has. But if you can see, everybody's detailed resume is in LinkedIn. You wouldn't have it elsewhere. You wouldn't have it in Facebook. You wouldn't have it in uh, Twitter or elsewhere. But everybody's detailed resume is in LinkedIn. Why do you think, why do you think you all have your resume in LinkedIn? Uh, this answer is going to be tricky, but let me see. For networking, okay. I want you to remember the first time you went to LinkedIn and created your profile. Uh, think, think it through. Professional platform. It's a professional platform. Other things are not networking. Uh, other things doesn't seem professional. Okay. Uh, job search. Yeah, I mean, uh, the question is. Uh, uh, I will just frame the question in a different way. I get it. I get the published credentials exactly. I get your purpose to, I guess your purpose to uh, uh, write it in the create a LinkedIn profile. But the question is, LinkedIn asks so many questions. You remember, 
LinkedIn asks a lot of questions. It asks what your certificates are, what your credentials are, why did you complete your degree, why did you complete your college, lots and lots of questions. But everybody, how it filled? Why is that? That's the question. Uh, the, the, I understand the purpose. I understand the purpose is job satisfaction. Uh, I mean, to search for job, to build your credentials, and lot more stuff. But it's a lot of work, but we still do it. Self projection, data analytics. Uh, data analytics is something that I'm very curious about. I'll get into that. Connection. The established connection. Okay, that's the norm. That's the norm. Okay. Done. Law. Established trusted contacts. Keyword search. Okay. So thank you guys. Thank you for your answer on LinkedIn. Uh, so now we're done with LinkedIn. I'll come back to LinkedIn later because uh, I, I think I need to frame the question in a different way. But uh, I'll come because that that part is there in the PPT version also. We'll come back to that uh, while that phase. The third question is gonna be. IKEA. How many of you know IKEA? Type yes. IKEA. How many of you been to IKEA? Okay, great. So if you have been to IKEA, uh, so IKEA is a super hit. IKEA is a super hit uh, a furniture uh, a furniture store like furniture store. But why do why do people love to buy from IKEA? Uh, if you do not understand IKEA question, you can also answer. So book my show always charges 30 rupees extra per ticket, like book my show or ticket new, whatever. They charge 30 rupees extra per ticket, not per transaction, per ticket. Uh, but they still prefer to book using book my show. Why? Uh, so first I'll take for question number one. First I'll take for uh, IKEA. Do it yourself. Great. Product novelty, customizable, brand. Uh, most of the IKEA products are actually uh, uh, they also have local uh, people also cooking up their uh, products in IKEA. Variety, variety is there. Variety, great. I wanted these answers because I'm going to teach you only these things towards the end of the day. So uh, you are actually teaching me, and I'm going to just make sure that you all taught me. And Choice, great guys. Price is cheap. Price is cheap. Okay. Price is cheap. Is uh, cheap is always a relative term. Okay. Let's see. So I'll take these answers for uh, IKEA. And if you can say why why people uh, book using book my show, even though they charge thirty rupees extra per ticket. Comfort. Okay. Select seat, great. I like that answer because I want that answer. Confirm ticket, confirm ticket. Cancellation option, okay. More options, okay. No dependency delay and due to laziness and ticket confirm with the ambulance. Great guys, variety of theaters are there, variety of movies are there. Uh, freebies cashback great so thank you guys thank you for your answer on these things so it looks like i'm asking a lot of questions but uh, we're going to connect all these questions exactly with the right framework and uh, that's why i need your homework here so we'll get to this uh, uh, we'll get to this sooner okay so why collect uh, so people uh, so how many of you here uh, collect stamps or collect coins? Uh, so I, uh, I when, my, when I was when I was uh, when I was young, uh, I used to collect stamps. I collect stamps. I do. I do. I do. So why do you do? So the, the, for people who have answered, I do. Why do you collect stamps? Or uh, why do you collect marathon medals? Uh, you can answer both the things. I think both the things will somehow connect. It's a hobby. It's a passion. Okay. So hobby and passion, but why do you collect medals? Like why do you collect medals? So you run a marathon, uh, but why do you collect? To learn about various countries, interesting. Okay. To show off. Uh, achievement. Sense of achievement, remembrance of history of humans, great history of humans. 
history of events might be for marathon also i suppose yeah because your guys are giving answer for both i am i should not make it so i i suppose i suppose both the answers for marathon also the, the answer will remain jolly it's jolly okay just because others did okay great just because others did because they like to uh, so i i keep my books behind why do i keep my books behind to show that i read books to show off a lot of things are there right to show your grandkids okay it's a kind of developed from childhood to show our grandkids to show our grandkids Okay, these are beautiful answers. Okay, these are beautiful answers. I like it. The interior design. Wow. To prove fitness. To prove fitness. Okay. To prove fitness, you run marathon. But why collect marathon medals? Uh, that's a good, good question. Okay, it's, it's, it's some sort of a, a motivating factor for you to run, maybe. Okay, interesting guys. Interesting uh, thoughts. Uh, the next question would be. Interesting question. Um, so. So imagine, imagine, uh, imagine yourself on the shoes of a content writer, okay, uh, or uh, anyone who writes that their, their day-to-day job is to write, okay. But they find it very difficult to write articles when they as part of job. When someone pays them like uh, a grand every day to write, they find it difficult to write. But people actually take some effort. People do some research and write like lengthy articles, thousand word articles, thousand five hundred word articles in LinkedIn in FB post. Why do they write? Because nobody is paying them, but still people write lengthier posts. Some some people do it for marketing. Uh, business people do it for marketing. They have another adjective, but like people, like normal people, common people, they take time to write like long posts or take time to collect beautiful articles and put a status in WhatsApp. Why do they do all these things? Share their thoughts. Get more likes. to get validation of thought okay this is their point of view proud full expressing expressing okay it's an expressing in a way passionate about the subject uh, on which i'm writing these are really good answers to share one they know to vent out their feelings okay 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 You would do that. Vent out their feelings. Interesting. People do that, yeah. People do that. Uh, worried about perception of close people. Ah, uh, uh, worried about perception of close people. Uh, if you're worried, ah, uh, uh, okay. I'm just writing it down. Close people. If you're worried, you wouldn't be writing, but uh, maybe I'll get a better thought. Like express thought, awareness, acknowledgement, expression, show. Concern about society. Okay, great. Okay, so we all have all these things for uh, every post because we are all done. We all did this at some point in the time. It can be just a WhatsApp status which, which we keep every day that goes in 24 hours, but we still do it. Why? We collect beautiful articles to share in WhatsApp. It goes in 24 uh, hours. There is no data. There is no history to it, but still people love to do it. Don't know why. So the sixth question is so we still have three more questions so once three questions are done we'll come back to the framework so uh, so why people love first day first show FDFS if people do not know what is FDFS it's going to a first day first show movie why people love that if uh, if anybody has been to F- FDFS uh, you can share or if you have been trying to go to FDFS and it's not possible uh, let me know publicity. to break the suspense to break the suspense interesting movie review fan following to review to review you go to first day for show uh, i mean reviewers go to first day for show to review uh, what do common people go for to get the first review okay to get the first review okay you want to be the first to be the first okay i see first okay idol workshop okay idol workshop just the kicks to see the sprints thrill okay it's a craze okay okay great great guys guys thank you thank you everybody uh, for putting out your thoughts like 
uh, I mean, the time is flying like a lot, and uh, I have a lot of topics to cover. So, thank you so much for being passionate enough to answer all these questions. Uh, fan screaming. So, you want to see the fan screaming when you are uh, doing oil workshop? Okay, great, guys. So, this answer is done. I like the carnival atmosphere. Fun dance, great. So, last two questions. Uh, so, why people use GPay over Paytm? So, if I am given a chance, it's my perspective also, and I see uh, when I ask most of my friends. Given a chance of paying via Paytm and GPay, I prefer GPay. Why? Simplicity. Okay. Earning a cashback. Earning a cashback features uh, are there uh, in Paytm also. Paytm also gives a lot of uh, cashbacks. Scratch card. Trust, okay. You trust GPay more than Paytm, okay. Commonly used UPI. I like Google. I like Google, okay. I like Google. Save, okay, guys. UI is good. UI is good. Great, great. So thank you for uh, your answers on why you use GPay over uh, Paytm. I'm assuming this to be a norm uh, across all the people. Uh, if you guys find it, Paytm is old. Okay, yeah, Paytm is old. So the eighth question. So why most of uh, uh, you guys might come out of a boring movie? So personally, from personally my point of view, uh, I've I've seen a lot of movies, but I find it hard to come out of a boring movie. Uh, let's take the first question for now. Uh, do not answer for the second question. Ticket is paid. Exactly, ticket is paid. Do not want to waste time. So you are better watching a boring movie than wasting time. Laziness. Outside is more boring. Okay. Nothing else to do. Went with family. Went with family. <laughs> Need closure. Need closure. Beautiful. I like the answer. Get value for the money. Get value for the money. Relax peacefully uh, because if you're an AC theater, it's better to stay in AC theater. Okay. I uh, went to movie for snacks. Oh, you go to Satyam. Enjoy the AC mindset. Okay, okay, okay. So we're getting a lot of answers. So I think most people have done it. So you've been in a lot of boring movies, but still you continue to watch the movie until the end. So we want to know why it is. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, assuming good climax. Assuming good climax. Okay. That's an interesting one. Assuming a good climax. I think hoping that something will be there towards the end. <laughs> uh, so Black Day sale. Uh, so how many of you know Black Day sale type? Yes. So great. So Black Day sale. Uh, so so the terminology that given and like uh, after the Thanksgiving Day. Uh, uh, it's like uh, what do you say? It's like a clearance sale. Uh, Black Day sale is like a clearance sale. Like people say 100% profit. Come come like uh, two day like. Black Day sale is like, like one day or one week, I suppose. Like there'll be different variations. Uh, for example, Amazon, uh, the great Amazon sale or great Flipkart sale, whatever it is, they run for a particular period of time, but it's a big hit among everywhere. Amazon runs, Flipkart runs, but both are having a success. Why do you think good offers? Okay, we're already answering it. Thank you, guys. Thank you for being here. Flash time deal. Okay, flash time deal. Heavy discount. Herd mentality, get herd mentality. To brag to our colleagues, you can buy more. Very, very. Many unique products offered, okay. Benefit more than cost, discount. Grab the opportunity to buy, grab the opportunity to buy. Grab the opportunity to buy. Okay, I hope uh, what uh, in the sense, in the sense, okay, in the sense, fear of missing out, okay, FOMO, okay, guys. So, uh, I almost got uh, black is otherwise disliked, 
okay unable to let go unable to let go yeah fear of missing out unable to let go all the uh, uh, eventually means the same so thank you guys thank you so much uh, for taking your time and answering all the seven different questions out there so for the next uh, for the next uh, 15 to 20 minutes what you're going to see is what the questions you answered why did you answer the eight questions in such a way and we just going to connect all the questions uh, uh, backwards that's what we're going to do so how to gamify is the topic that i'm going to handle but before uh, okay I'll, i'll jump into that uh, so there is something on habit formation also uh, i would like to speak uh so before i go to gamification i will also cover a bit of uh, habit formation so uh, so there are a lot of books on habit formation so this is predominantly based on uh, there is something that's connected between habit formation and gamification uh, gamification is a part of habit formation i will connect those things also i'll try to connect those things i hope at the given time so there are four stages of habit formation as uh, as told by james clear the author of the book atomic habits there are four stages one is q q is something uh, that you see uh, you have to see something uh, so for you to make a habit you have to you have to get some q to make it a habit you have to have a craving for it uh, if you want to do a habit you have to have a craving for it that's step number 2 and these steps fall in order first is q next is craving third step is response Uh, someone had to respond to it like you had to do a response that's a habit uh, your routine thing is what is what i call uh, uh, the uh, the response and the fourth one is reward and there are two rewards that is something called immediate gratification and the long term goal so whatever we saw under gamification falls under step number 4 called reward so we only catch it to step number 4 via gamification we didn't catch it to q we didn't catch it to craving we didn't catch it to response via gamification we are only trying to catch it to the step number 4 the reward but step number 1 step number 2 step number 3 all three are important but i'm not going to cover about all these things today because that takes a lot of time we're going to cover one bit of it that's called reward that is a long term and a short term reward so i'll just cover the reward aspect uh, uh, clearly and then uh, i'll leave it there and uh, so we plan to do a lot of uh, Uh, master workshops later uh, we'll see to that at some point of time uh, so that's something i wanted to give it right now and uh, maybe i'll i'll try to come back to the uh, the mind node later so now we'll move on to the ppt and then come back to the uh, mind node and try to connect whatever you answer because you all answered it correct what i'm going to say uh, so uh, so everybody is still there so 200 people are still there okay that's a good sign for me okay so now uh, i'm going to go for the keynote presentation again uh so uh, so the thinky uses prezi uh no i'm not using prezi for now i wanted to use prezi prezi is a beautiful uh, beautiful uh, uh, video conferencing uh, tool guys uh, you guys should check out prezi video uh, i'm not an evangelist for that but Prezi is game changing. Uh, I'm sure over the next couple of months you will see a lot of people using Prezi because it's game changing. Prezi, Prezi video. Uh, so if you want some take away for the session, just write about Prezi video. Uh, as Tripathi put it out in the chat window. Uh, that's what Prezi is. Uh, check out for that. So now we are back. Uh, Anupam asking which application for mind mapping. So it's called Mind Node. uh it's only for uh, mac users uh, there are a lot of other mind maps which you can use uh, i use mind node uh, uh this is mind node yeah uh so how to gamify as i said how to gamify falls and just qualifies the fourth aspect of uh, habit formation the reward so that is a beautiful framework i think uh, there are a lot of frameworks for gamification but the but the framework that guarantees you result is oxal this is framework i've used it personally and professionally and i've seen to uh, i get to see results uh, evidently and we're going to cover about doctor is framework for now so octal is this framework has as the name octa says it has eight different uh, core drives so human beings uh, are motivated by eight core drives and those eight core drives are there in front of you so the core drive one is epic meaning and calling 
code drive uh, i will cover all the eight code drives in a flash uh, because we have covered all the code drives by yourself before myself introducing you what the code drives you already know it i'm just going to connect the dots backward and that's it guys so we're going to look at the eight different frameworks but mind you guys even this uh, octalysis framework won't solve the fourth step completely it's just a part of it there are a lot more to it uh, given a span of 1 hour we we'll try to cover as much as we can yeah so the core drive one is epic meaning and calling uh, so i took the question like uh, wikipedia and someone said purpose uh, it's a bigger purpose it's a bigger calling it's a give and take it's a give and take right? so if people do certain activities because it's an it's an epic meaning for them it's a it's a calling for them. Uh, when i say calling calling can be offers also if somebody gives you a, a one day offer just for today you have this offer that can be a calling also when i say calling doesn't mean the spiritual calling it's like calling you feel it like ah this is for me if you feel that this offer is for you that, that you are the gifted one to see the offer nobody else see it if i say uh, whoever is attending this webinar today uh, you will be given a uh, 50% discount for my next webinar uh, for my next workshop on gamification if i say that that's a calling for you because you guys might feel that oh this is a calling for me because this is only exclusively meant for uh, the attendees of isaka so we must register for it that's a calling uh, that is also a calling or it's an epic meaning so if you remember tom shoes uh, how many of you remember no tom shoes type yes or type toms in the chat window toms tom shoe no are you actually making the offer no no <laughs> i'm not making the offer guys thank you uh, so tom shoes uh so i'll tell you what tom shoes is for tom shoes for every shoe that you buy they gift one one shoe uh for the people who are in need that's their business model buy one shoe from us we will gift one shoe to the person in need where else did you see this thing happen in your life there are a lot of things it's happening where else did you see a similar strategies happening uh like uh you buy one shoe from us we'll gift one shoe to uh, people in need uh, why do you think this is happening uh any examples where you go there nike selling similar offer okay okay uh, cl classmate notebooks right uh, classmate notebooks pc if you turn on the classmate notebook at the end you say for every notebooks that you buy we contribute rupees 1 uh, towards uh, children's education uh, have you guys seen that amazon offered for pm covid fund exactly exactly so these things you buy it because you have an epic meaning to it uh, so those are some sort of game english elements uh, how can you bring about an epic meaning to a product uh, or to a particular uh, uh, to a particular action can you stimulate someone so people are stimulated if it's an epic calling or epic meaning amazon donating equally to pm cash fund for donation making so great great so exactly so those are something like an epic meaning Uh, it's a strategy which you can use it uh uh welcome to prime video 30 day free trial that's also calling for you so use it for 30 days and then these are also some of game making elements so try try just for now if you like it uh, uh you buy it similarly uh, yukai chow i told you right yukai uh, chow is the world's number one game making group if you search for his udemy course it is always 195 dollars okay always go to udemy search for yukai chow sports it is always something around uh, 12000 to 40000 rupees uh, even today but every day remember this every day if you go to visit yukai chow's website he will say guys for today only i am going to give you this offer 195 dollar worth for free he does that is every day whenever you go to the site he says today only but you go tomorrow you go day after tomorrow you go one month after this he will be offering his course for free why is that that is actually an epic calling for you so today is the thing i think i should register for this right away it's like 195 dollars worth and if you go and see udemy it will be 195 dollars it's a different way of marketing it's a different way of brand building but uh, the course is really worth it uh, uh, i'm not criticizing the course the course is really really a uh, brilliant course Uh, you can always try that google offers similar each domain brand building yeah 
so yeah we all know this right so we all know this i'm just trying to put it everything under one framework so people are motivated by epic meaning and calling that's core drive number 1 is it not misleading then yeah yeah it is misleading but it's free see that that, that is good thing and that is bad things uh, you you can take a call on this you can take the call on epic uh, uh, later that is something some some certain things are bad and things are uh, good Uh, I cannot go deeper into a good gamification, bad gamification. It's a deeper topic. We'll go to that later. Today, I just give a glimpse. Take a call for ethics by yourself. Core drive number two: development and accomplishment. So people like development and accomplishment. So, uh, for example, Nike running uh, today. I run uh, this many steps. So people run, try to run every day, right? So people try to. Uh, accomplish something uh, uh for example i completed 500 foot steps today i walked uh, 10 km like 1 km today there are a lot of apps right so why do people have those apps because those apps are based on gamification because people like development and accomplishment you have crossed uh, you have, you have crossed the most you have walked for the most today give a tap uh, give a thumbs up for yourself those those messages those triggers really works because human core drive number 2 is development and accomplishment and that's the reason why i was asking yeah uh, okay i come back uh, so google maps so how many of you are uh, local guides google local guides here type yes uh, when i say google local guides you post pictures uh, you write reviews you write feedbacks uh, in google about different people everybody is a google guide Uh, you can you can register yourself as a Google guide, right? Okay, okay. So I myself I am myself a Google guide. Uh, whenever I go there, I take a picture of the food. I make food reviews or uh, sometimes even review. Does it have a parking space? A lot of people it ask questions and I just help them. Why do I help them? The the motivating factor for me can be epic meaning because I love I like to work uh, I like to uh, uh, help people. but there is also something called uh, a batch something like points like you are now level 7 google guide right? you achieve a rock star status you are under level 5 you are a superstar status so people give you the status in local guides have you ever uh, those local guides who are uh, who are google local guides have you ever come across uh, those things just get a change to their norm get a chance to go to the annual meet exactly guys uh, krishna subramani on exactly right you also get that as you accumulate more points as you collect more points you also get to go to their annual meet that exclusively for the local guides so that's the benefit to it also and uh, this uh, this point this accumulation of points actually helps me to do more and more like the one in trip advisor on review of hotels and restaurants exactly you are right and that's the reason that's the reason why we all have an all star profile in linkedin is there anyone here who doesn't have an all star profile in linkedin say i am or type type i am in uh, the chat window let me see how many of you are there is there anyone who oh, there is venu gopal and i am okay so you are you are okay so you guys are not all star okay all you guys do not know whether you are all star uh, there can be two things to it so if you go to linkedin today uh, towards your uh, top right you will see you are an all star status you you are an all star uh, guy because this linkedin always pushes us like the moment i fill up my name and my uh, current designation it will say fill up your school details you will you will your profile sense is intermediate your profile sense is strong your profile sense is superstar it actually triggers me to complete my profile uh, so if you see other apps like facebook or twitter they do not have such an progress bar but linkedin has an inbuilt progress bar that actually motivates people uh, how many of you are saying that it is because of that uh, when i started linkedin it is because of that progress bar i actually try to complete as much as i as much as i can type uh, uh, yes no chinmoy rajpai is saying no okay somebody is saying yes yes okay okay so i'll take the positive ones yeah because uh, maybe you not uh, maybe you are not motivated maybe someone is motivated by see the uh game is not is not for everybody for certain people certain things are uh, code drives so there are eight code drives some will work for certain things some will not work for certain people uh, so many people are saying yes unknowingly we will fill it just to make it green yeah just to make it green true just to make it green true yeah right 
to avoid being incomplete yeah so you can see the profile strength all star whatever star all star so if you go today if you seek i think most people will be under all star profile so that's like core drive number 2 development and accomplishment we like that core drive number 3 is empowerment of creativity and feedback uh, just a question now why the the time is 625 how long do we have uh, why the if you can answer yeah yeah you can go up to 7 uh, sandil no problem okay great uh, is everybody is fine with that ending beyond uh, no by 5 10 minutes also is fine we can go okay okay great so i'll try to uh, wrap up by 650 and i'll take uh, 10 minutes of q and a uh, so the core drive number 3 is empowerment of creativity and feedback that's the reason why we book using book my show though people pay 30 rupees extra because it's giving me an empowerment of creativity and feedback right i want corner seats if you're a couple you like to pick the corner seats and if you're going as a family you want the center seat of the auditorium so you have the empowerment of creativity you have options so people like to have options and that's why people love ikea also uh because people say do you know who made the furniture it's me do you know who did the interior decoration it's me i designed it myself though you didn't design it because it's already there you just mixed up everything you just made it customizable but people love it people love empowerment of creativity and feedback and that's the reason people keep going for ikea though most of what we buy at ikea is not required uh, per se for you it's not a need it's not a want but you still like it because uh, the empowerment of creativity and feedback is what triggers you to do more same thing with uh, that's the reason why you book your seat in advance when you're booking your flight or uh, the why uh, book my show or why red bus is popular because you have to, you have your choices you can book cheap uh, bus ticket or a costly bus ticket you can book a, a volvo bus or a normal bus you have an option Pe- uh, it likes human being likes option getting feedback and getting creativity you can be creative in booking a book ticket booking a bus ticket i i made the best bus ticket possible i i tried out 10 different buses i look for the cheapest one or i look for the most comfortable one and i booked it that sense is what uh, is making you to go book via red bus rather than going to a, a a guy and booking it there are other benefits also but this is also one of the benefits uh tiktok or smool uh people take time and effort to sing song people to make videos uh, youtube youtube creators why do people do all these things youtube youtube is just a platform everything out there in youtube is built by the people uh, youtube gets a lot of money in their revenue share but it's all done by people because people love people love empowerment of creativity and that's the core drive number 3 the core drive number 4 the one i asked you for uh, uh, so why do we collect the marathon medals why do we collect stamps so the lovers we love ownership and possession uh that's one of the reason uh, uh we like ownership uh, most people uh, personally people like ownership uh when someone uh, so there are a lot of things are there uh, so people predominantly likes ownership so if you are a sweet super sweet member if you are possessing that you tend to buy more often from super sweet uh because you have an offer uh, you tend to buy more uh Uh, because you collect e cash uh, which you can redeem later you try to collect more e cash because ownership and possession people like uh, in general and if you can trigger something uh, which collects which collect some things which which are like uh, uh, ca- uh, collectibles if you can make some collectibles as one of the rewards people will love it uh, collectible that people value it. the code red number 5 is social influence and relatedness How many of you have looked at uh, when you are buying in Amazon? Looked at customers who bought this item also bought and actually bought something. Is there anyone agreed? Okay, I am. Okay, I am. Yes. So we do this right thing. So whenever we uh, we refer a book, we always see what is the related books. What are what are people reading? Uh, uh, which product has more uh, uh, customer feedback, customer reviews? Uh, we go if, if anything is more than four point five stars, we feel that it's good. because we like social influence and relatedness since they are buying okay let me try to build consensus among them i skip that to be unique okay msk okay. yeah you do, you do not like that yeah. most people like that yeah. great look also for total number of reviews and star rating yeah total number of views also matters uh, and star ratings matter so that's social influence and relatedness and that's the reason why we post uh, uh, in linkedin why we post in fb it's like more likes right the more likes triggers us 
like a social influence that we have and relatedness my post is being liked by all the people my fp profile picture looks nice and hence people are like loving it so i like to have that uh, relatedness with the social people around me and people will love that so if you can trigger that thing in your thing it will work uh, uh something like steps compared to other users so certain apps will also have you can also form a group among your uh, if you are running a marathon or if you are if you are a early morning jogger you can create a group among yourself and you can compete against each other like this guy ran 2 km today you ran 2.1 km today this guy ran 500 steps that's also social relatedness can you create that engaging element within them where people compare and uh, create a social influence a peer pressure uh, if i can say uh, that also helps and the core drive number 6 is scarcity and impatience Uh, we are not uh, scarcity and impatience. Uh, only one left in stock. Uh, what when someone when you see when you are looking for a product? Uh, in my this has actually worked out in my area of fitness camp. Yeah, it, it works. It really works. So all these things uh, really works. Uh, yeah. So if so, so if you see uh, if you are buying in Amazon, if it says like, only one left in stock, what do you do? Uh, do you buy it or do you procrastinate it? buy or procure right type buy or p if you see only one left in stock what you will do if you want the product uh, uh, badly uh, you will tend to buy it right like uh, that's what we we'll do it right like when you see only one left in stock or uh, this offer ends in 12 hours 23 minutes uh, uh, good marketing i would say yeah you good marketing you would say okay i won't buy its old stock okay interesting good one very good one so It's old stock, yeah. It's, it's a very good deal. I like that. I like that. It's a old stock, yeah. If you want it badly, uh, I'll give it a thought, yeah. So, uh, but people, uh, the, that's the reason why the, the flash sale, right? Uh, the Xiaomi always sells their product at 12 o'clock, midnight sale. It sells by 12, 12, 5, 5 five minutes, and they sell only thousand uh, mobiles at that point of time. I do not know why do they do it, but it's a great, great marketing strategy because people love it. uh people like that scarcity and impatience that's the reason why we like first day first show also people keep pushing you trailers teasers uh, lyric videos lyric songs you get that impatience you really want to try that so you said thrill right i want to see i want to see the first one to see it that's the reason why the first day first shows are so costly and it's scarce also because there is only limited first day first show tickets and you also want to go to a particular theater to watch at a movie there's only 1000 tickets out there you can always raise your prices so if you can build scarcity and impatience around your product or around certain things people will like it uh, if i can uh, if i do a, uh, for example if i'm doing the next workshop on uh, uh, gamification and only for people who are attending this isaka website uh, will be given 50% discount but limited to only 10 people and if they do it right now if i give that offer what will you do you will be triggered are there only 10 people there there are 200 people already in this workshop it's 50% offer maybe i should try it so you might go for it right you are registering yeah i'm not doing it as i said i'm not doing this thing but we tend to do it uh, we tend to do it right so that's what i'm saying people like not uh, people are triggered by scarcity and impatience uh, that's the code drive number 6 uh, Code drive number seven is interesting. It's a very interesting one. It's unpredictability and curiosity. That's the reason why people buy like to buy from GPay rather than Paytm. How many of you, how many of you have got maybe in the last one week, uh, in the last five transactions after scratching your GPay, have got a have got any rewards? How many of you have got some rewards? If you have got, type the reward amount. Rupees five. Better luck next time. Rupees five, rupees six, nil, eighteen rupees. Okay, so seven rupees. So I think mostly what I what whenever I whenever I try using GPay, I actually get better luck next time. And I'm happening. I can see my mobile right now. I can see at least five to six things that's under uh, uh, better luck next time. But still, I like it right because I like the scratching option. You scratch it, better luck next time. Let me try my luck. So people. human beings love curiosity and unpredictability and that's the reason like zomato if you had seen zomato uh, before the uh, pre covid in the pre covid era zomato runs an offer 
there are two offers one is 50% uh, discount another one is uh, like you said predict and win 30% they give 100% cash back also you just predict the winner today and get 100% cash back like one offer is are you buying for 50 100 rupees you get 50 rupees cash back straight away it's a known offer i would go for it i am a safe guy ambora discount irukku let me go for it the other offer is predict today's ipl match winner will it be a uh, kings uh, chennai super kings or kolkata knight riders predict the winner if the winner is right you will get 100% discount or something like 30% discount uh, it will be more than what the static percentages but people still go for the prediction because people like unpredictability and curiosity and that's why gambling this player rummy online rummy whatever rummy that's coming everywhere loads and loads of people are playing it because people like unpredictability and curiosity so if you can figure that people will love it that can be something like if i'm running a workshop uh so okay workshop is uh, typically boring so i'll come up with a better example uh for example uh, uh you, you might have seen somewhere like uh, if you can come across somewhere like uh, where you register for where you will buy for a product uh, and uh, the uh, thousand people like thousand people among them will get a gift voucher will get a reward you do not know whether you get a reward or not there are like thousand people who are getting it but you still want to try it and hence you buy it like a lot of ticket or reward based uh, those gift vouchers you wouldn't get a uh, fixed reward they wouldn't say if you buy the product you get a fixed reward you get a, a guaranteed reward they say we'll give you a scratch card you might be or put it in a coupon box like a lottery box there'll be 100 people selected from it people will like it more than giving a guaranteed gift i'm giving you a guaranteed gift for 50 rupees but that uh, unpayable gift is 1000 rupees what do you want to try i will go for the 1000 rupees one because people love unpayable and curiosity can you create that around your process it will figure people and the last uh, yeah so this was uh, this also is happening in uh, how many of you like uh, this railway reservation chart uh, in the uh, in the railways uh, no, it's not there currently it's banned uh, how many of you like it say yes 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 i am yeah I mean i like it right like everybody likes it like we, we like to go there we like to search for who is sitting around us uh, who is she or who is he uh, where is she lot of things right so we because we're curious enough when you are young we are when you are young we are curious enough to search and this thing is not there and i'm really missing it so if someone can create an app where whereby it says uh, enter your uh, pnr number you get to see who is traveling that will become a super hit also that will become super because people like it people like unpredictability and curiosity to see others age yeah to see others age wait yeah. start this session with curiosity yeah okay that's the four words that you're seeing yeah i'm happy with you guys find that out privacy breach a privacy breach is the reason maybe why they stopped it i do not know the current reason but we love it try to do it without privacy breach that's what i'm saying uh, just like give you pay give and pay different closely and the last one is loss and avoidance uh, people do not want loss and people do not want to avoid uh, people want to avoid loss also that's one of the code right that's the reason when you see uh, like yami products or if nowadays any mo- any mobile products if you buy they will stay by extended guarantee for one year how many of you have seen uh, extended guarantee type uh, ew Ex- extended warranty ew type ew if you have seen it yeah you guys have seen it and most people would have bought it uh, because nowadays mobiles don't come for uh, more than one year so there is something called the replacement guarantee also like it says after one year uh, your mobile will be taken for uh, like 7000 rupees or you have a or you have like extended warranty because people will like or uh, scratch card resistance uh, if you break the mobile i uh, will replace it because people know that i will break my mobile and the mobile won't come for more than one year somehow i will go for the extended warranty uh, but mostly these extended warranties are not claimed predominantly but people uh, will tend to buy it because we tend to avoid loss and avoidance uh, you see here uh, you see myomi is there you see the below that the mobile phone that says you can add mi product for 799 recover up to 80 percent of the cost so if you buy in the mobile for 10000 you will get 80 8000 uh, back uh, if it's uh, uh, broken before some period of time 
it's a gain to the company yeah it's a gain to the company that's how insurance comes insurance is different uh, life insurance is different our term is different but this loss and avoidance is inherent to human beings so people tend to uh, avoid that and that's the reason why we tend to watch movies though it's boring it's okay guys it's okay we want to avoid the loss like fear of missing out will be missed somebody said uh, i am expecting the climax to be super uh, it's a boring movie for 90% maybe the climax is great let me wait for that that fear of missing out also we do not want to avoid we do not want to miss that we do not want to be lost hence we tend to put in our time uh, uh, tend to put in our time today so that's the so that's the eight uh, core drives of human uh, uh, motivation guys um, uh, so uh, that's the eight core drive so epic meaning and calling core drive number 1 optimism rest of the movie can be still uh, interesting okay but, but you can put it optimism you can put it optimism also that, that's a uh, positive way of putting it uh, but these are these core drive these eight core drives really really uh, uh, triggers and uh, uh, helps people to do an activity uh, trigger something uh, jet airways jet airways jet privilege membership card right like if you if you buy a jet privilege membership card what happens you tend to avoid the long queues you have a special walk in uh, you are a busy guy you feel you are you are a busy guy and you do not want to waste time waiting for the in the counter and you want to go directly into the cabin so you have a jet privilege which which gives you access privilege access you tend to buy it uh, shell also has this uh, uh, shell uh, premium petrol uh, uh, i usually put it in shell premium because that's where nobody stands i think that nobody is going there and i'm smart enough but actually it's because it's costly people tend to go to the other one around but if you if you want to avoid the long queue that's out there if you want to be faster if you're going to an office you want to go faster you tend to take the premium petrol so uh, that's the that's the strategy shell is using people like to avoid uh, long queues and uh, lost time so can we add a, a different category of uh, petrol they call it the premium petrol but better i think but it's also a strategy of portioning it uh, the higher price and the different counter there will be more counters for shell premium and very limited counters for people standing in uh, normal uh, petrol if you can note it down uh, nobody comes to shell premium but there will be lot of people standing everybody comes for normal petrol but there will be very few people uh, standing right so uh, that's the reason uh, that that's some sort of strategies uh, people are working so we see all these things happening around us every day and uh, which one can you take it for your life uh, uh, let's there and uh, yeah the caution is uh, it's not like don't try this at home uh, you can try it with your wife you can try it with your children also uh, so you can try in error there's, there's something called trial and it's, i'm not saying you not to try at all there is trial and error because there are lots and lots of deep thoughts into this there is something called uh, white hat gamification and there is something called red a uh, black hat gamification some are good some are bad for example when the the bottom three core drives scarcity and impatience loss and avoidance unpredictability and curiosity these three are actually black hat gamifications when i say black hat these are not negative these are not negative gamification but these are different the top three right uh, the 1 2 3 uh, epic meaning and calling development and accomplishment and uh, uh, empowerment of creative and feedback are white hat gamification but both the things are effective but in certain places you cannot use certain things and similarly the right and left there is something called the extrinsic reward and intrinsic reward uh so ownership and possession uh development accomplishment uh scarcity and impatience all these things will fall under extrinsic reward empowerment of paid in feedback the whatever you see on the right right part they all fall under uh, intrinsic gamification so there are a lot of depths to it guys and uh there are a lot of stages of gamification there are stages 1 stages 2 stages 3 stages 4 and uh, you need to gamify it for different people also it's not one size fits all uh, for every people you have to differently gamify it and there are different strategies different dashboards to it so all i am saying is that there are a lot of depth to it that uh, for gamification what i have given you is just a overview of gamification uh, so if you trying this out uh, you might uh have some errors but nothing wrong in that just learn to make better mistakes uh, that's what i would say do not uh, sit back just try these things out and learn to make 
try to improve upon it just try and error trial and error is a great thing uh, i'll just give you a, a before i conclude i'll just give you a failure case study uh, there was one company uh, uh, there was one product that was designed where uh, the company there are like 1000 people working in the company and they want everybody to remember every colleague's name uh, by their face uh, if, you, if they see my face they should remember sendil kumar if they say uh, someone say they should remember karthik subramaniam i'm just saying this name because i see those faces right in front of me uh, uh joseph matthew so if i can see all these things i should remember their names uh, whenever i can and what they did they did a uh, an interesting uh, a poll kind of activity so every day morning uh, every day morning of some point of time they'll ask some questions uh, they'll show a face they'll show a photo of the person and they'll ask is this kathy rosen sense or ami davis something like they will show my face and ask am i sindhil am i vignesh am i joseph am i krishna or I? something like they ask four questions and you have to choose uh, whom do you think is that and what they saying they are creating a leaderboard they try to create a leaderboard leaderboard says who is uh, who is good in remembering everybody's name they try to create an event around it uh, so every week they will select one guy to be on the leaderboard uh, so who is topping the leaderboard uh, so that people felt that uh, people will be competing with one another to remember everybody's name and then uh, uh, our workplace will become a very very uh, interactive workplace that's what people thought but it backfired nobody started using the app only 10 people started using the app do you know who the 10 people are those 10 people uh, just guess only 10 people are using the app whom do you think the 10 people are just make a guess in your chat box i'll just see there are 1000 employees only 10 were using it hr folks okay <laughs> since because they started it okay uh those who developed it who designed okay the top 10 yeah the top 10 you're right the ones who are in the leaderboard the top 10 leaderboard they are the one who was competing i am in number 10 i should go to number 5 or number 1 they were competing with them but the ones who are left out right the 990 people they are just ignoring these things oh, okay this is for them this happens to everybody right a uh, lot of company during the covid period uh, started squats challenge push ups challenge lot of challenges are happening but only very set of people were doing it why because people thought just by bringing game element into a non game context you can make it gamified no you just be bringing game elements into a non game context is not gamification you have to cater to the human core drives and this company did a small tweak to it and the product worked what do you think the tweak would be they did a small tweak to the rules and the product worked brilliantly uh uh what do you think uh, is that thing try to make a guess one tweak one single tweak it's a super hit what do you think is that uh increment increment <laughs> one tweak happens so increment increment is also a, a badge right it's also a badge it's like developing an accomplishment that's why uh, people like Uh, becoming a senior manager executive uh, the roles right those are actually development and accomplishment that's why people uh, no matter how bad the job is we tend to work because that batch is what is triggering us the appraisal hoping that is some sort of development but increment reward points okay make it mandatory making it mandatory okay rewards for participation will matter who logs first Okay, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Uh, these are all. These are all certain things which people see. Leaderboards and batches are the systems which every company is using out there, and it's failing drastically because leaderboards, batches, rewards are all extrinsic rewards. Uh, those are external rewards. They work only for a very short span of time. They work only to initiate an action, not to persist an action. There are a lot of depth to it. I'm just giving you a glimpse. these extrinsic rewards is only for a short term to initiate an action it works if you want someone to do an action give them 100 rupees they'll do it but if you want to do them every day extrinsic rewards won't work so remove leaderboard okay remove leaderboard they they had a leaderboard actually what they did was instead of creating a leaderboard for an individual person they created the leaderboard for teams they put up that 1000 people under like 25 different teams uh 20 people in each or uh, like 50 people in each team 
or like like imagine that 100 teams are made to 10 people in each team now the competition was meant for the team now what happens if somebody in my team like if every nine people in my team is actually pushing out doing push ups every day and if i am not doing push up what do i feel i feel that i am making my team go behind in the leaderboard because i am not contributing it so just by making it a team activity it worked it worked wonders for the team for that particular uh, for that particular company for that particular team it worked it might not work the same way for you also but i'm just giving you a glimpse so if you can trigger because here the trigger was social influence and relatedness the core drive five just because my team is working and i'm i'm, I'm not contributing my team is losing out i feel more uh, 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 more obliged to do that thing. so that's what i wanted to say so if you can create some certain core drives that triggers people interest so you will be successful uh, in doing that uh so uh, so this is what i want to say so so as i said all the uh, all the thing that you that you saw today is only meant for reward there is something called uh, the four steps q craving response and then reward the only thing is q has to be very very obvious uh when i say q uh there was an experiment that was done in a company uh where uh, Uh, people are drinking more soft drinks, and the company want to uh, encourage them to drink more uh, water. That's the only attitude they wanted to have uh, to improve the people's health. They wanted people to drink more water. So for that to do, you have to do only one thing. The first thing is Q. You have to make sure people see water everywhere. If they see soft drink cans everywhere, people will go pick up the soft drink can. But if they see just just along with the soft drink can, if we can add more water bottles. we can have more dispensaries or water dispensaries that's the first cue so if you want people to drink water make sure water is there everywhere so because if you see water you actually bring out the craving you feel thirsty the craving has to be there if you can't generate a craving for a craving has to be there the craving has to be attractive the craving is not attractive people will not respond to it the respond is actually is the routine or the habit do not think response is based on motivation uh, the reward is actually motivation but it's the cue it's the craving that really really matters if you can if you are not working around the cue no matter how motivated you are you won't create the habit so create in the cue though it seems very very simple it's really really effective that so if you, there are a lot of books on habit formation if you can see there is a book called uh, uh, tiny habits brilliant book by uh, bj hawk he says a b c of habits anchor behavior and celebration so it's the same thing guys anchor is nothing but uh, the cue you need an anchor the cue and uh, uh, the craving combine together to form an anchor you need an anchor to start behavior is the is the response celebration is the reward you need to have an instant celebration also uh, so only then you can create a habit so lot of in depth things are there uh, we do not have time for all those things Uh, so, if you want to learn uh, more about things, I will recommend three books: uh, "Actionable Gamification" by Yuka Chow, brilliant, brilliant book. Uh, whatever I covered uh, in an overview, he has covered everything in detail. He has covered what is intrinsic, what is extrinsic, what is black hat, what is white hat, what are the different stages of gamification, what are the different game elements, lots and lots of stuff. That's a brilliant book, uh, "Actionable Gamification." Uh, for habit formation, you can also combine uh, because. This is not this. In, this look looks incomplete for me. Actionable gamification, but if you can understand habit formation, like Atomic Habits by James Clear or Hooked by Neil Real, you can buy Atomic Habits. You can buy uh, a Tiny Habits. I recommend Atomic Habits. Uh, uh, James Clear is it's a recent book. Uh, he also gave reference to Tiny Habits, which means he has learned from him and he has published a better book. So you can always refer for Atomic Habits. And Hooked by Neil Real is for uh, how to build habit forming products. you can take it a reference and create habit forming uh, processes also uh, so try it for yourself first try it, try using this game elements for yourself first then try to uh, experiment with your uh, colleagues with your team and stuff like that tiny habits is too good yeah tiny habits is too good yeah tiny habits excellent okay it's four c's and not four q's okay uh, i am not sure to see the, what is the comment by vaidhi I think no, I think you're saying 
Q, Crave, and uh, all those things, right? So that's what uh, you said. Four. No, no. Uh, so the four habits. Uh, when I say atomic habits, atomic habits has four stages: Q, craving, uh, response, and uh, reward. That's the four stages of atomic habits. Tiny habits has three: A, B, C. It says anchor, behavior, reward. Both the things are really same. So it's like different books, different thoughts, different authors. but the basic principle basic philosophy is same you need an anchor you need a cue you need a behavior you need a craving you need a behavior you need a reward reward is really really important don't aim for the long term reward there needs to be a short term gratification also to create a habit or uh, if you need to create a habit uh yeah so uh, you can just uh, browse about these things summary of these books at any point of time and uh, just go. uh so yeah i will uh, end it here So keep gaming and uh, keep learning. Um, so you can always reach out to me if you have any thoughts on it uh, at sendil at the rate of muddy dot com. Uh, I have my mobile number also shared here. If you want to follow me in any social media, it's always sendil muddy. Uh, uh, the common uh, uh, at, at sendil muddy. If you type LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, wherever, uh, you will reach out. You can reach out to me at sendil muddy is my uh, tag. Uh, if you want to tag muddy games, it's muddy games. Yeah. So yeah, I will end up here. Maybe I will take. Uh, if there is any questions, uh, uh, I'll be happy to take any. Okay, I have unmuted all. Uh, we will have some uh, quick three questions or four questions max. Uh, please don't exit. We will take the final uh, video shoot and then we can leave. Uh, just five more minutes. Questions, please. Yeah. Questions. The answer is keep gaming, keep learning. For the quiz, which I already typed. One question. Vaidhi, can I ask a question? This is Narayan here. Please, Narayanan, go ahead. Yeah, uh, Sindhil, thanks a lot. It was a fantastic session. Uh, so these these uh, gamification concepts are all. Is it is it a culturally sensitive issue? Like, do they apply across all cultures? For example, are we talking about behavioral habits of uh, humans in general, or is it India specific, or is it you know country specific or culture specific? Uh, so as I said. Uh, Uh, one game with technique will not work for everybody uh, so before you gamify the thing called empathy mapping also uh, so as i said uh, i didn't even use just a overview of uh, gamification there are in depth steps to it you need to understand uh, you need to create gamification for every individual so when you say culture when you you are talking about north indian south indian you need to game it differently for uh, different cultures different perspective different behavior different personalities you have to design it differently but we can't define it for everybody so we need to make an approximation out there uh you can't have one but try to have at least a couple or three three or more uh just to think just to start with uh it's not one size fits all uh, thank you for the question yeah i i hope i'm answering it uh yes and you did it thank you thanks a lot thank you yeah and uh, shantosh shantosh is the one who got it right So if you can combine all the underlined letters uh, uh, in the PPT, you get something called uh, "keep gaming and keep learning." Uh, thank you, thank you, Santosh, uh, uh, for finding it out. If you're really looking for the reward, the reward is uh, saying your name, right? Like uh, people, people like recognition also, right? Uh, it's a development. It's an accomplishment also. You accomplished it, and you feel good. You have a sense of satisfaction by riding around also. So that's also a sort of gamification for you guys. Uh, so you, when I started saying this, also you might know this is a gamification, just to make sure everybody looks at every PPT and doesn't go back to sleep or uh, uh, do something else. I just kept it to be an activity. Uh, uh, so yeah, keep game. The underlying words of hope. I'm the first to guess. Keep gaming and keep learning. Yeah, a lot of people are guessing it. Sindhil, yeah, thank you. I said first. Ravi Chandran Subramaniam. Okay, I, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Thank you guys. Thank you. So everybody, everybody who are taking the time and effort to. Uh, Uh, make a note of all the letters and saying. Uh, so it's a, a takeaway for you also. Keep gaming and keep learning because games are not not just meant for kids. 
uh, so if you want to understand more about uh, serious games uh, so i'll be happy to talk because that's what i do full time uh, my company that's what we do we design uh, we design serious games digital uh, we were early into board games right now we moved on to digital games uh, we design serious games around mental models so sorry i'm speaking much any other questions by the i'll be happy to take yep so so uh, once again you know in the chat window i had posted the intent of this program is you know how we take it uh take the learning from today and go back and implement certain gamified or gamified you know uh awareness programs for our organizations back on or beat on information security or business continuity or any of our domain areas you know many came back you know as mundane as filling time sheet is some of the some of the people you know put in over here how do you make it uh, you know a gamified approach either through a rewards or a program or you know uh, sandeep talked about uh uh bringing in the fear factor or rewarding you know some from that perspective we can all think of something and that's the overall intent of bringing this session today okay any more questions and while we ask the last two questions you know you can all switch on your video so that we can take a quick snap and yeah, little knowledge is actually dangerous so i have given you a very little knowledge so it's dangerous that's why i said don't try this at home somewhere somewhere other but next should you try an error because uh, It's not complete. What I've given you is just uh, little knowledge. It's dangerous. So, but it's a good learning. It's just an excitement factor. I'm just triggering you to learn. If you're interested, you can always learn. Any more questions? Can you also turn your videos? Gamification. thank you thank you guys thank you being uh, thank you for here towards the entire session and and the people already already here i'm very happy to know that uh yeah one thing i wanted to say uh, i forgot it uh, if i can say why she put here sorry uh, say hey, one go, go ahead chandel sorry go ahead <clears throat> i was just wondering uh, the cp hours uh, can why the or uh, sleep with yourself can you tell uh, what does you mean by cp hours I just want to know how many of you joined the session for CP hours. Uh, Last time when I was there in the Chennai, the, the event, uh, people said we came to the event because we come to the event, we get some uh, points, some something gets added to our system. That's also a reward system, guys. Right? That's also a reward system. That's that's something that's triggering you. That's like uh, development and accomplishment. I just wanted to. I hope CP hours is something similar. Uh, if I'm wrong, uh, correct me. but if that is similar uh, yeah you guys understood why it is working yes steve you were asking some questions please go ahead yeah, yeah no, no. i was just trying to say that um, we have put the official link for this uh, feedback for the session in this group chat so if people can scroll and uh, you know cast their feedback that will be great and uh, central i believe people were asking for the presentation also so i believe you'll be sharing the presentation with us right uh If you want uh, presentations, I can I can I can share. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. And also one more thing: this is uh, this is uh, the session is recorded, so this will also be you know available in our YouTube uh, channel shortly. So you can go and uh, have a relook at it there as well. And also for the previous uh, three sessions, we have also ha- uploaded the videos. So in case you have missed out any PDM, and especially last one. Uh, and this one also is very good <laughs> so you have made that uh, thing sense so you have made it interesting as like the last session that we had okay. for iot so uh, kudos to you and uh, thank you um, so much so i pass it out to vaidhi for any closing comments <clears throat> um no uh, i don't have uh, anything right now um, once again thanks a lot sendil uh, for coming over once again to share your uh, the thing on uh, the session hope um, the learning from this uh, program you know people can take back and do something uh, uh, back at their organization so that is way you can get started something okay um, nothing you know jumuna you have anything jumuna you have to unmute yeah sorry i uh, thank you sindil for a very wonderful session i think more reverse uh, it was very interactive like uh, i didn't feel like a webinar it was like a personal meeting uh, that way it was a, a real game which we played today 
better than i mean different from other sessions thanks once again thank you thank you uh, have a great sunday uh, yeah okay. thank you yeah thank you keep gaming and keep learning and yeah. i i'll just put a virtual clap for uh, sendil here bye yeah. thank you i'll put a clap for everybody for staying to <laughs> thank, thank you, you so much yeah bye happy weekend guys yeah